Welcome everyone. We are on the 15th lecture of the Passover Haggadah and uh, God willing this will be the last and uh, we'll finish the series. Uh, last week we finished off what actually Chabad does when they do the Haggadah, they stop here. And what continues, uh, we follow in my house in Ashkenazi uh, tradition I think for my family, it's the happiest time. They sing songs, beat on the table. I always wait for the police to come. It gets awful loud and rambunctious in my house. But they seem to enjoy it. I don't know if they understand exactly what's going on with it. So we're going to try to fill in the missing blanks and have some understanding. Um, we start off with the Uvechem Batsi Alayla, and it happened, came to pass at midnight. Uh, that said on the first night. And then on the second night, it said, Pesach. And then you shall say that this is the Feast of Pesach. We'll deal with both of them as if they're one. Um, so it seems strange that the redemption, uh, again at midnight, would come at midnight, uh, the time that represents the darkest forces of evil. This is to tell us that even at the worst of times, that God can make them a time of divine mercy and favor. And Mashiach will come when we give up, when we give up hope. Also, when uh, Tikkun Chatzos has said, the prayer that we peop very righteous people say for the loss of the temple, uh, again, said at midnight, based on a tale Shem Shemronim and the uh, heritage Haggadah. Um, and again, it talks about the... Um, all the miracle, miracles that God performed at midnight. So it says you performed many miracles in the past at midnight, that Abraham, Abraham defeated the four kings at midnight. Avimelech was judged for kidnapping Sarah, yeah, Abraham's wife, at midnight. Also, uh, Lot was saved and Sodom destroyed at midnight at, uh, again, Pesach. Uh, Lavan was warned in a dream not to harm Yaakov, again, at midnight of this time, Jacob, Yaakov defeated Esau's guardian angel. Again, at this time, the Egyptian firstborn died and their wealth was lost. Again, at this time, Sisera's army was destroyed. Sancherev and his armies fell dead. Nebuchadnezzar's statue and its pedestal broke at this time. Daniel interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dreams. Also, Belshazzar was killed just after Daniel disclosed the secret of the handwriting on the wall. And Ahasuerus slept, sleep, pardon me, was disturbed, leading to Haman's downfall. Again, all of this it came to pass. Again, Bechatzi Alayla, at midnight. Um, now, also, but what will, be, what will be the outcome of this long exile, this, uh, this long night of exile? So may you tread on those who oppress us. May light shine for the righteous and darkness to shroud the wicked. Hashem, the time of redemption for your nation and for your city, let the darkness of exile be brightened by the light of day. Then it continues again on the second night, we say, and you shall say that this is the fast of uh, Passover. Again, Pesach, which is a Pesach we see in the Torah. Then many times we say to God, you've exhibited your awesome might on Pesach. You visited Avram Vino foretold of Yitzchak's birth at that time, overturned Sodom, and saved uh, Lot. Granted Yeshua victory over Yericho um, and delivered Midian into Gideon's hands. Additionally, the defeats against Ancheira, Belshazzar, and Haman were all occurred on this night. Now, he continues then, um, again, may you bring the downfall of Edom, show the strength which you showed on the night of Pesach, and redeem us as in the days of old. It continues with the um, paragraph dealing with Kilo Noe, Kilo Yoe, of um, to him praise is due, to him praise is fitting. Now, it's this, this paragraph was composed, uh, according to many, in the Middle Ages. It's an unknown author and was a part of the Seder, the time of the Maharam of Rottenburg, some 700 years ago, based on the Elias uh, Haggadah. Now, 
the um, this praise deals with it's in alphabetical order, and all of the praises exist from Aleph to Tuf, so to speak, A to Z. No blessings exist again without God. So it talks about the uh, companies of angels say to him that yours and only yours, Kilo Noe, Kilo E, that uh, yours, yes, yours, yours, surely yours, yours. Hashem is the sovereignty, and to him praise is due, to him praise is fitting. And it goes on to say again with the Hebrew words, Kilo Noe, Kilo Yoe, Lecha, 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 Ki, Lecha, Lecha, Af, Lecha, Lecha, Av, Lecha, Hashem Amlocha, to God is all the majesty. Kilo Noe, Kilo Yoet, again to him is do the praise and it is fitting. Begins with the company of angels, then goes on to the faithful say, his scholars say, and then um, talks about his righteous say and his perfect ones say. Um, this is a hymn of our fervent desire for the Messianic age and the rebuilding of the temple. Sages uh, teach that the third temple will not be built by man, it will descend from heaven at the time of redemption. For this reason, we, we ask God that he should rebuild his house quickly. Uh, again, this is the, I, uh, the theme of Adir Hu, of the uh, psalm that said, that he is praised in Yivne Beso Bekarv, let him build his house quickly. In our time, that Kel Bana, Kel Bana, that the first two temples were built by man, um, of the idea of El Bene, El Bene, of, the, uh, of God building them, and, um, and did not survive. They were both destroyed. But Bene Veshko Bekarv, but the third temple will be built by God himself and therefore will be eternal. Bath in the Eifod Bad and uh, the heritage Haggadah. So the first two temples, again, since they were built by man, did not have the same Kedusha. They did not, they were able to be destroyed. Again, there are some who say that we will build it. Uh, but for there are opinions that say one day you'll wake up and there it'll be. Now, this poem and the two that follow were composed in Germany about 500 years ago, again, based on Elias Haggadah. And again, this also follows the Aleph phase of, uh, again, A to Z with all the blessings. Continues with the uh, poem that says, Echad mi Odea, who knows one? The Eter Yeshua sees this song as a list of the merits which resulted in the redemption of the nation of Israel from Egypt. So when we say that, uh, that who knows one, that one is our God in heaven on earth, that by what merit were our ancestors redeemed from Egypt. So it says, Shnaim and the Odei, I know two. So the first one, Achad, knowing one, of course, is the belief in one God. The idea of the two allude to the two tablets. They were eager to accept the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. Who knows three? Three are the patriarchs. That God had promised the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he would redeem their children. Who knows four? Four are the matriarchs. That we know that the Israelite women followed the way of modesty and righteousness taught to them by their four matriarchs of Sarah, Rachel, Rivka, and Leah. In fact, the word barzel, iron, is an acronym of these three names. The base for... Uh, for Billa, of pardon me, that's actually the four mothers, uh, four wives of of uh, pardon me of Yaakov, are Barzel, Billa, and Zilpa, and uh, Rivka and Leah against steel. Also, who knows who knows five? Again, five are the five books of the Torah that they would soon receive. The five books of the Torah given to them by Moshe, which form the core of the written Torah. Again, they were brought out of Egypt in that merit that they would accept the Torah on Mount Sinai. Who knows six? Six are the orders of the Mishnah. Again, the oral Torah that are comprised of the six sections of the Mishnah. The first of the uh, oral, oral tradition, again, that was edited by uh, Rebbe, Rebbe Hudav Anasi, and was the first to be written of the oral Torah. Who knows seven? Seven are the seven days of the week. 
that even during their period of slave, even of their period of slavery in Egypt, that they chose the seventh day as their day of rest. Uh, in reality, the seventh day was actually Yismach Moshe, as we say in the prayer on Shabbos, in the Shachrit, in the morning prayer. Yismach Moshe B'mat Naschalko, Moses was very happy with his portion that he had suggested to Paro, even before the Jews accepted Shabbos, that he should give them a day of rest so they'd be more productive. And he chose Shabbos and was happy to see God. He had chosen what God wanted. And who knows, eight, eight of the, the eighth day, the day of circumcision. Circumcision is usually done on the eighth day of life. It was performed in mass on the eve of the Exodus so that they could partake of the Paschal offering. And everyone who ate from it had to be circumcised. So the two that the bloods they put on their doorposts were not just the blood of the Paschal offering, but also the blood of circumcision, which is why at a, at a circumcision even today we say, but the Maya Chayi, but the Maya Chayi, by your blood you should live, by your blood you should live. These are the two bloods, the blood of circumcision and the blood of the Paschal offering. It's interesting how God created man on the eighth day of a child's birth, that a young man, a young boy, has more hemoglobins in his blood than any other time in his life. God prepares him for this operation of sorts. Who knows nine? Again, nine are the nine months. The Jewish wives were not intimidated by Paro's orders to cast every son into the river, but conceived and carried for the full nine months, placing their trust in God's salvation. And as we know, they left Egypt after the three generations with over 600,000 men. That's even after four-fifths of the Jews died in the days of darkness. So one can imagine what they did in Egypt. Who knows 10? 10 are the Ten Commandments, that the nation would eminently accept the Ten Commandments. Who knows 11? 11 are the stars in Joseph's dream. That the family of Joseph's 11 brothers, represented by the stars in his dream, uh, changed neither their name, their language, nor their manner of dress in Egypt. Again, this is the three merits. Also, the fact that he didn't speak Lush and Hara, which is maybe greater than all of them. Who knows 12? 12 are the 12 tribes. And all 12 tribes maintain their fam family integrity. For no Jewish woman consented to the advances of the Egyptian taskmasters. And 13 deal with the 13 yud gil and 13 attributes that God takes for us to be uh, saved with. That God taught Moshe the prayer of the 13 attributes of divine mercy to be followed in word and deed in times of national distress, which allowed the Jews again, to be saved in their time in the desert from the, uh, when they would sin, Moshe Bain was able to call upon this. Now, the Haggadah ends with the famous Chad Gadya. Chad Gadya. Chad Gadya is one sheep. Well, Gadya is really a kid um, that, fa that, da that father brought for two Zuzim. And we say again, Chad Gadya, Chad Gadya. Now, the double expression, Chad Gadya, one kid, one kid, refers to two sacrifices that the nation of Israel offered in Egypt for, the, for Pesach. The uh, one was for the Paschal offering and the other was for the Chagiga, for the festive offering. Also the law requires in the Gemara and the Chagiga that the sacrifice called the festive offerings in the Chagiga be sacrificed be worth at least two pieces of silver uh, that uh, betray Zuzay with two pieces, so that the reference to the father buying it for two zuzim alluded to that. Also, the repetition of the phrase, one kid, one kid, which is mentioned twice at the end of each stanza, is a lament designed to convey our feelings of longing for the past period of glory. Also, the Aruch HaShulchan sees the kid as being a reference to the goat that was slaughtered by Yosef's brother after they sold him into slavery. Uh, Yosef was sold for 20 pieces of silver. And so each of the brothers would have received a share of two silver pieces since there were 10 brothers who were involved and Yemen was not there. As alluded to by the word, two zuzim. Also, chad has a numerical value of 12. The Yosef was one of the 12 tribes who was sold because of the kasonis pasim, the coat of many colors, which was worth two sloim. And the word gedi, for a kid, his numerical value of 17, that he was 17 years old when he was sold. And even though this seemed to be the worst of worst, that also the words, the number 17 is the mantra of the word tov. And many times in life, that which we seemed 
to be the worst of worst. After all, he was sold into slavery and then became a prisoner as well. And yet from there, he was catapulted into greatness. He served as the viceroy of Egypt for 80 years. And we see again how great things many times come from something that's negative. Sometimes you have to bend down in order to, to reach the greatest heights. Also alludes to the two kid goats uh, that Rivka prepared for Yaakov to take to Yitzchak on the night of Pesach. This is when uh, Yaakov Avinu received the blessings from him when that were meant for Esau, these material blessings that we have even today. Yaakov received both Yitzchak's blessing and the birthright of Esau. And this originated the, the two mitzvahs at uh, the Karben Pesach and Chagiga, again because of this happening on the night of Pesach. Now, it says uh, the word Bedizban Abba, the father bought. The father refers here to Yosef, but the Aramaic word Abba is often used as a title of importance, and it is used by the Targum to refer to Yosef himself, based on the uh, uh commentary. And uh, the it then gives different. Um, Animals beginning beginning with the shore, also sh pardon, pardon me, the Asa Shunra, the Achalagaja, and a cat. So we'll go through a cat, a dog, a stick, fire, water, an ox, a slaughterer, a shochet, the angel of death, and the holy one, blessed be he. So it begins with the Shunra, that this cat that ate the kid. This alludes to Yishmoel, that just like cats are not faithful, they don't know who their owner is, so too Yishmoel. Also, the mothers were je the, probably the brothers were jealous of Yosef. Again, been a heritage of Then in the next verse, it talks about the Kalba, the dog. This alludes to the Egyptians who bit the Arabs by selling him to them. Had they have kept him, they would have become very wealthy because they sold him back to Yaakov, which they didn't realize. Also, Paro, who oppressed the brothers, uh, based again in the heritage Hagada. The chutra of Hiko Kalba, and then we have the stick that hit the dog, and this alludes to the staff of Moshe Rabbeinu that smote the Egyptians during the plagues and passed on. This, this same staff was passed on all the way to Dovan Amalek and was kept all the way through the first temple. And then it talks about the uh, fire that came and burnt the staff, the fire that made the eagle golden calf that was made as an exchange for Moshe Rabbeinu. And this also alludes to the, the Yetzirah, which brought about the des destruction of the temple by virtue of the fact that they're bringing idol worship into the temple, negating the power of the staff. And it talks about then the next one is the Maya, that the water that extinguished the fire alludes to Torah, Torah learning, which is connected, which is alluded to by water which is an atonement for the eagle. Also the fact that uh, the Anshe Knesset Agdola, the men of the Great Assembly, um, all who rid the nation of Israel of their desire for idol worship. When the Gemara says that they fasted for three days for the, the beginning of the Second Temple to take that desire out of the world. They felt it was just too great a desire for the Jews to be able to overcome, so it was removed. Then it says Vasatura, and then an ox came and licked up the water. This alludes to the animal soul, the Bahama, by Nefesh Bahamas, her animal soul, and the desire for physicality which stops him from learning, that eats up the water. And also the, um, the again, of a, an ox is something that works. And it's sometimes, many times, that the Yezhar uses work as a pretense for a person to not be able to study Torah. Also the nation of Edom, whose emblem was a bull, and tried to uproot the Torah from the nation of Israel, again, based on the heritage Haggadah. Then came the Sheikhet, the slaughterer, who slaughters the ox. This refers to tzaddikim, righteous individuals that kill their nefesh Bahamas, their animal souls within them, and also Mashiach ben Yosef, the Messiah that will come from Yosef, who will war with Adam. And again, we know that, that the symbol of Yosef was the ox. Then it talks about the Malach HaMavas, the angel of death, again, that will kill the slaughterer. The salutes of the nation and the Yetzirah. Also, also that always tried to bother the Tzaddikim, 
also the heritage Haggadah uh, says before the ultimate victory again Mashiach when Yosef will be killed and then also Kodesh Baruch Hu, God will come and kill the angel of death that it will be God who will cause an end to death and bring uh, Mashiach Sikeno, um the um, against the Messiah may come speedily in our time and also God will avenge the pain and death of tzaddikim. Now I'd like to go over it real quickly again with a quick um, explanation. Again, a cat alludes to Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian king who destroyed the temple. The dog, some say actually that he was nursed from a dog. He was a barbarian. Uh, in fact, uh, no, the Chizkiyos saw him eating a live rabbit. So, so according to tradition, he was actually nursed from a dog. So the dog is also alludes to the Persian king Korish, Cyrus, a stick to Greece, wielding a powerful staff, a fire, alludes to the Hashmanoim, the Kohanim, who tended fires in the temple and defeated the Greeks, again Hanukkah, and the fire of the menorah. Water, uh, Edom symbolizes the war of, roar of waves come crashing with great force, that it says the prophecy was that a nation would come by sea, that the Romans came by ships. And then an ox, that Yishmael, who according to the Medrash will conquer Edom. And again, as we see today, that's happening with the ISIS and the, all, the, all the wars in the Middle East. Again, some call it the fifth exile. And then a slaughterer, there will be those that will kill Mashiach ben Yosef, again the ox. We believe there will be two messiahs. First will come the Messiah of Yosef, who will be killed. And then tradition has it that Mashiach ben David, the Messiah of King David, will come and he will survive and that will bring in that new era. Again, so the angel of death who will kill the enemies of the nation Israel with the coming of Mashiach. Again, this alludes to the war. Granddaddy of all great wars, Gog and Amogog. Now, again, we don't know exactly what history is, especially with the future. So we don't know if that war was World War II, again, where many people died, or whether... There is a war in the future that will make all the wars the world have seen be nothing. Uh, the great rabbis said many times that they didn't want to live in what they called the ikve de Mashiach, and in the heels of the Messiah, which way, may well be the time that we live in. Again, we live in the plug, and we believe that the Messiah can come at any time. And we hope for his coming, but that doesn't mean just like a woman before she gives birth whatever travail she may have through her pregnancy, that moment of giving birth is, may well be the most painful of all. And, um, but the benefit that she has far outweighs the pain that she goes through. And may God bless us that it's an easy birth and that we don't have to go through those travails. And finally, the Holy One blessed be he came and slew again the angel of death, which will put an end to death forever. That when Mashiach will come, that will be the end of dying with the coming in of the herald of a new time. And again, to the time of the Tachiyah Samesim, of the revival of the dead. Again, uh, as to what all of these are, commentaries talk about it. The Rambam contends that the coming of Mashiach will have no miracles. That life will be the same as it is. There will just be a time of peace. And the truth of the matter is that in itself is a miracle. And it's interesting that many prophecies that we have seem to be, if not impossible, highly improbable. And one of them was that the whole world will know Mashiach when he comes, which up until modern, very modern times, very modern times of computers and satellites, it really was, there was no way for the world to learn something at the same instant, whereas now one button, and in an instant the whole world will know Mashiach is here. And it's not even, it's a no-brainer. It's nothing that takes any great miracles to do. So we see that everything that's happening is leading us into this time. And again, may it come quickly in our time. And may it be that the next year that when we celebrate the Haggadah and we do the, our, our Paschal offerings, as it will be in Yushalayim, Mira Kodesh, in Jerusalem, the holy city, and we actually bring the Paschal offering and we'll sit with our families and bask in the ray of the Shekhinah as God meant us to do. Again, thank you for attending these lectures. And uh, as I wish I could, but of course I never do either, it's impossible to go through them all and to uh, repeat them all. But it's good to know and take a little bit each year and to expound upon them 
and to make your Seder richer as you go through and uh, again connect to that which God wants us to and as we do that we internalize God and become a little more godly. May God bless you all and thank you for coming and have a good Shabbos.